This ain't financial advice. Cardano and Solana. Got my seatbelt on. Brace yourselves, folks, because we are in for a ride. I have been saying this before, and I think a lot of you yesterday were going, oh my God, Cardano, 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 it's gonna blow up and it's gonna go down. And then you woke up this morning and the opposite happened. You have to have faith, people. You have to let the spirit move you. So, <clears throat> Cardano and Solana, I still think they kind of tried to copy the name a little bit and just change an S and an A and, you know, Solana, Cardano, Cardano, Solana. Um, they've been pip, 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 pip. And people over fixate on the price of cryptocurrencies, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Cardano, whether it's Solana, whether it's Dogecoin. Here is the problem with that. The price of the cryptocurrency does not equate to the value, okay? Look at the top 10 coins. And you say, okay, let's look at these like they are a product, okay? The value of the coin, I believe, is what it does. What is the utility? What could it possibly offer to people, okay? The price of the coin is what people are willing to pay for the coin, okay? But if you look at this and you say, well, does the price validate the value? What can this coin actually do? And that is how I look for things that are undervalued or overvalued. So if you say to yourself, this coin is a cartoon, okay? What value does it offer? Use Dogecoin as an example. It's a top 10 cryptocurrency today, okay? Dogecoin's price is at what, a quarter? But is the value really worth a quarter of Dogecoin? And if you believe that it is, why? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you look at something like Ethereum, if you look at something like Solana, if you look at something like Cardano, Cardano, I, let's start a coin called Solano. Haha, -ha, we'll be an instant top 10 top 10 hit we throw a little dog on there solano <laughs> going to the moon baby but the problem is if solano doesn't have any sort of utility like cardano does like ethereum does like solana does a little tongue twister here what are we selling hello novel idea so if you look at those three projects that i've just named not solano that's a joke and you say wow they all have a proof, not a well, they don't all have a proof of stake system. Cardano has the proof of stake system, Solana has the proof of history system, and Cardan and Ethereum has a proof of work system still trying to go to a proof of stake yet to be seen. Hopefully, we'll see it come here in the future. I don't believe that we're all in some competition the way that a lot of people out there in the comments in comment hell <laughs> think. I don't believe that. I think Cardano, I think. Ethereum will be around in 10 years. I don't know about Solana. Solana, the verdict is still out. And quite frankly, as I said in a previous video, the verdict's still out on all of these coins. We are in early days right now, okay? This is the beginning of a revolution, okay? So don't, don't be so aggressive or so quick to wanna like, ah, I want the winner now, because you're not gonna get the winner now. Nobody is gonna get the winner now. The only people who are getting the winner now are the people who bought Bitcoin in 2010, okay? They're like, maha, I was right. I was correct once again. After 3,900 horrible trades, I finally got one. Thank God I got locked out of my account for 60 years. <laughs> finally remember the passcode. So the point that I'll make now has to do with maximalism. Somebody called me a Cardano maximalist. And I don't think I'm a Cardano maximalist, and I feel the, the need to uh, express my opinion here. And I'll tell you why, because I'm open-minded to things like Solana, but I do critique it. I critique things like Cardano. I'll give you a critique right now. A little bit slow to get the updates, okay? It's taught me patience, cool. But yeah, it would be nice to see things going a little bit faster. But the reason why is because they're using a peer-reviewed process for the development with people around the world. And that is not fast. If you want a 
quick hamburger from the drive-thru, you go to McDonald's, okay? If you want Wolfgang Pup, you gotta wait until they make it in the back from scratch. So that's just what we're dealing with here. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice. So <clears throat> back to my point. The people who bought Bitcoin in 2010, we'll say, okay? Because if you bought it in 2009, you're, just, you're a rock star genius. So comment down below if you bought Bitcoin in 2009. We know you're lying if you say you did. So the point is, is that Bitcoinists, Bitcoin maxis, the maxis with the maxi pad because they're so sensitive, yeah. The thing about them is that they've been through so much FUD. They've been through so much attacks, so many attacks. They've been through so many people calling it a Ponzi scheme, calling it a, a funny money, calling it fake, saying it's not real, saying it's worthless, to only be vindicated and only to be proven right about their own convictions about Bitcoin, while all those other people who said this and that and launched attacks on them left and right and publicly, Jamie Dimon, Bitcoin is worth it, da, 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 over the years, to be vindicated and say, you are incorrect, to now see the world come on to Bitcoin, major companies like Visa, like JP Morgan, like Goldman Sachs, like all these companies jumping on the Bitcoin bandwagon. And why? Because their premise was correct. El Salvador adopts and then double downs on Bitcoin. <laughs> I love saying Bitcoin. My mom told me, stop saying Bitcoin. The Bitcoin joke's not funny anymore. It was funny one time. It's not how my mom talks, but I just like to do that. The Bitcoin joke was only funny once. Stop doing it all the time. So, no more Bitcoin jokes. So, when you're vindicated in your fight for something like Bitcoin, you take a step up. You feel that you are always right, okay? So when other things come into play that challenge you, and those other things could be, not necessarily the mainstream media, the mainstream banking legacy financial system, it could be other coins. You're gonna say, screw that. One, this is the thing that made me rich, so there's always an inherent bias with something like that, and you don't want that other thing to make you not rich now. That wouldn't be cool, right? Netscape. So, <laughs> the point that I'm making, though, is that it's hard to be open-minded when everyone around you for a decade has been so close-minded towards your idea and your idea in the end proves to be absolutely the correct one. When the whole mainstream media narrative switches to, hey, Bitcoin's pretty good, to seven years ago, Bitcoin's a Ponzi scheme, you feel pretty damn smart. You feel like you can't lose. So, how does someone become a Cardano Maxi? How does someone become an Ethereum Maxi, a Solana Maxi? <laughs> a, a Solano Maxi. Very simply, the exact same way. They face retribution. They face backlash. They face Reddit trolls. They face YouTube trolls. They stick to their guns. Diamond hand, petrified wood, big brass balls for you in your coffee. And in the long run, if those people are vindicated, they were right and the others were wrong. And the cycle occur, occurs again and again. So it's important to stay open-minded to continue to research. And just because you've been vindicated once in your theory, it doesn't mean that's the only theory. It doesn't mean that's the only thing that can be good, okay? Car companies are coming along right now to challenge Tesla, Lucid Motors, NIO, okay? NIO, ticker. Will Tesla always be number one? Well, that's like saying Ford will always be number one. Was Ford number one at one point in time? Of course it was. Was General Motors number one at one point in time? Of course it was. But other things will always come into space the space to disrupt it, especially when we're talking about billions and billions or trillions and trillions of dollars. There's too much money on the table. And to think that people won't fight like rabid dogs to protect their corns, <laughs> sorry mom, is, is, a, is a, um, a delusional thing to think, okay? And to think that things that won't come 
into the space that are better, that are improved, that are more advanced, is another delusional thought process. Whether you are a Cardano Maxi, an Ethereum Maxi, or a Bitcoin Maxi. Now, really, there's really only Bitcoin Maxis and Cardano Maxis, because the Cardano tribe, baby, stick with nerd, stick with nerd, stick with nerd, uh, has not been fully vindicated. But when our vindication day comes, hither, <laughs> we shall see the man come to the top of the mountain. We shall see. No, please don't start acting like that, okay? Re reality is, is that, yes, Cardano may be highly vindicated in the next five to ten years. With that being said, something else may come along. Okay, maybe start, uh, Solana dumps with the VC holdings. Maybe it becomes more decentralized with their nodes and they become the fastest, smartest, cheapest, scalable, most secure blockchain. It's possible. I'm not ruling that out. But right now, it's highly centralized in comparison to something like Cardano, Ethereum, or Bitcoin. It just is. Deal with it, okay? And you need to accept that if you own Solana, okay? <laughs> you holding a ticket time bomb. No, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. Didn't mean to yell. So the point is, you've been yelling this whole video, Scott Wallace. So the, ah, the point, I sprayed the camera. So the point is, is this. 10987654321, calm. The point is, is that we're walking through history right now. Things are gonna change, things are gonna emerge. Things are going to pass each other in market cap. But you have to say to yourself, let's not have that narrow-minded maxi vision. Maxi vision, bzz, with the laser eye. Let's have an open-minded talk about these things so we can not be so biased in our judgment of new things. I mean, is there anybody out there who actually believes that being a Bitcoin maximalist is like a smart idea other than a Bitcoin maximal maximalist? Like anyone who's done the research into forget Cardano, Solana versus Bitcoin. Like, why would you not pick Solana? Anybody who's done the research into like Ethereum or Bitcoin, why would you not pick Ethereum? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Of course, you would always pick Ethereum or Solana if you had an objective outlook on the two scenarios and you were put into a thought tank and you had no crypto and never heard of crypto and two options were, um, uh, you know, given to you. If, if, if you were put on a desert island, right? And you had the option of these two things, a pocket knife, okay, with a three inch blade or a Swiss army knife with a three inch blade plus a corkscrew plus a million other tools in it, not a million, but you know, 20 or whatever, the, depending on the Swiss army knife you get comes with, which one would you pick to go to the island with? I think it's obvious. But if you're going, no, I have the original knife, it's like, Okay, well, we're not fighting wars with muskets from the Revolutionary War, okay? We got machine guns, bro, with turrets. And we're brah, 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 brah. Crack, crack. <laughs> I run the internet. So just think objectively towards this stuff, and you'll probably fare okay. If you are vindicated in your own thoughts and your own belief systems, when you get to that mountain tap, be able to look at the things that are at the bottom of the mountaintop because there's always going to be disruptors. And the minute you think there aren't disruptors and somebody has been crowned king is the day that you lose the crown. Folks, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you tuning in. And if I don't see you, I will see you on the internet. I'm out. Stay, please, North.